Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our product owner and TGIF episode. And uh, we're in a terrace with Ryan Karim this week. Hi, Ryan. Welcome back. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Merry Friday. Absolutely. Let's imagine we're in that terrace over there next to the seaside in Spain in some warm, sunny place. And uh, we're just chatting and uh, somehow the product owner conversation comes up. And uh, we'll talk about a great product owner in a minute. But uh, let's start with the mostly uh, or sometimes the most interesting and definitely the most intriguing question, which is, Ryan, share with us what was potentially the worst product or anti-pattern you've witnessed in your career? Okay, so no names and no organizations, but uh, <laughs> the, the worst scenario I've ever seen is when a business analyst is told they're a product owner overnight with no training, um, no real commitment to a change in title or a job description. But they're now told that they need to perform in this product owner way. They need to create a backlog. They've never heard of this backlog idea. They don't know how to go and um, study the customer, understand what the 2B should look like. They don't know how to engage the right parties at the right time to developing that backlog um, or how to break it down, right? So I've seen a few car crashes, um, both in scaled organizations and even in scale ups too, um, where people just haven't had the right level of support. Uh, and it's not their fault, right? It's the system around them that's created their inability to be effective in their role, <laughs> but they are ineffective in their role. Um, in a way, these are some of my favorite scenarios because it means you've got a lot more room for growth and impact as a coach and someone who's there to make things uh, more more effective. Um, but yeah, there, there's been some terrible instances where. So, so walk us um, through, like what what happens, like you know, the uh, let's say Mary, the business analyst, uh, got a call from her boss yesterday. Uh, it was like five thirty p.m., so just about the time she was about to leave. She had no time because she had to go and meet someone to 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 you know to talk to the previous product owner or other product owners. She just got the call. Hey, tomorrow you're the product owner, and by the way, you have sprint planning. What yeah. happened? It's a car crash. Um, so you're not able to plan effectively because they don't even have the information that would be required to plan effectively. They don't know who the customer is. They don't know what the customer's goals are. They don't know how they're going to measure that. And they don't know the scope of work that's going to be broken down to, to even deliver it. Um, that was one scenario I had in a particular workplace, which I'm not going to mention. Um, where it was just not possible to begin. So that's okay. So then we're going to start building the backlog, right? Fantastic. So step one, um that we need to first of all figure out who it is that we're we're impacting and what do they want why do they want it you know what's their experience and then we need to chart um the current way that we facilitate that experience alongside the way we think it could be done better and we need to involve all of the right people at the right time um despite giving that advice right to this this new person we'll call her mary for now um, and her completely agreeing, making loads of notes and being so like completely um, focused on making it happen. I then circled back uh, literally literally like the uh, two, three days later um, and just saw the backlog and just hung my head in absolute shame because I should never have let her uh, continue without me. Right. I should have dropped everything I was doing and just worked with her only. Um, but unfortunately, she wasn't the only person in that situation. I was supporting many people in the same situation at once in this occasion. Um, but yeah, basically, the titles didn't make any sense, right? So if you're looking at a backlog and the titles don't make sense, they're not they're not what I call Ron Seal. There was an advert in England years ago. Ron Seal does what it says on the tin, right? It, what is it? Just tell me what's happened. What this is? It's only a title. It's okay, but tell me what it is. Um, of course, there's no user stories. Instead of user stories, there's a bunch of bullet points, right? <laughs> Some of those bullet points are not outcome focused at all. It's just a you know just a wish list of things that have come from a director, uh, and the BA has been a BA and made notes, and now we've got a bunch of notes with a title that doesn't make any real sense, um, and no way of measuring it. Um, so no way of proving the value, no way of proving um, the behaviour that we'd want to see um, as a result of that user story. Uh, just an absolute car crash, really. So. 
and that's probably the worst PO I've worked with. Um, fortunately, things got better. You know, it took us um, probably a month to get uh, Mary into a into a, a better place. Um, but yeah, it was a good. And that's experience. our work, but, right? Because those car crashes really do happen, like you just illustrated, and we need to be ready. And that's why we ask this question here because we want to be ready because we understand it's gonna yeah. happen. Be ready. It, is, it is definitely going to happen. Yeah. And you, you do have to be ready and you have to be, you know, understanding again, this is why I love systems thinking so much is that it's not the person, right? It's the person I've seen so many scrum masters that I've, I've worked with, I've mentored, I've coached that uh, they get really frustrated, right? And they think it's the person's fault. Uh, and they're like, well, well, she should be doing a better job. It's her job. Da, 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 da. She should have researched. She should have done this. I'm like, <laughs> She goes to work. There's a whole entire organization around making Mary successful. And the organization is not able to serve Mary. So Mary, therefore, cannot be effective. So what do we need to change around Mary so that Mary can be effective? And once we change it, you see that, oh, look, Mary now knows what she's doing, right? Because we're giving her what she needs to be successful. Um, and at the right time, which was something you mentioned when we talked about the, the change process as well, because at the right time really makes a big difference. Uh, yeah. when, when we give support and, and sometimes we need to train, we're not always coaches and it's important to recognize that. Um, when we give people what they need at the right time, they are not only grateful, but they immediately learn how to apply it to something that has meaning for them. And, and that is a much better structure to attach learning to. Exactly. And they might not nail it first time that they give it a go themselves. But At least 17 times they need to do it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> repeat, exactly. repeat, repeat. And it's just having that having that patience uh, and dedication to, you know, their um, upliftment of ability in the workplace that, that, you know, as a coach, as a scrum master, as an agile coach, uh, you should definitely make sure you, you take a few spoonfuls of every morning. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, uh, I want to highlight one module of our uh, e-course for coaching product owners, where we start by exactly discussing this problem, how to onboard a product owner that is new to either agility or the product or both. And it's really important for us to be ready. Although this sounds, as I enunciated, a pretty stupid problem to have, it is also a problem that happens in real life and we should be ready for it. Totally. All right. But of course, there are also awesome product owners that we love to work with and even learn a lot from. So that's the one we want to hear about now, Ryan. Share with us the best product owner you've ever worked with. How did they work? So this was actually at an energy company that I was working with uh, not too long ago. Um, and it's, there was two really key people, both in a product space, that just made it awesome. One was the lead of, these, of the PO community of practice. Um, and that was a great, a great dude called Adam, and he'd managed to create effective, an effective framework and guard, got kind of guide rails or guardrails, however you want to see them, um, for every PO within the organisation. Um, and what he'd been able to do is co-create that with everyone in the community, side by side, over time. And so by the time I arrived there. It's made my job really easy, right? Because the product people really knew what they were doing. Right? They knew how to um, they knew how to frame OKRs in their customer lens. They knew how to look at creating a product roadmap and measure that without um, signing themselves up to tight deadlines when things could definitely shift when you're doing software delivery. They knew how to create an as-is customer journey and a to-be customer journey. They knew what the different uh, um, agile events required from them. They knew when to ask for help, right? And they knew how to spot dysfunctions within their team and within their program or within their lab, you know, whatever, whatever words we're using, tribe, you know, <laughs> squad. Um, yeah, but they learned how to spot the dysfunctions and, and ask for help, right? So sometimes they even know the answer. They're, they're just like, oh, I haven't got time to fix it. So can you go and could you go and have the conversation? This is what's playing out. I'm like, it's amazing. You're basically doing half my job for me, which is fantastic. Um, you can't ask for more, right? People that already know how to be effective product owners as well as uh, working with their team and keeping an eye out for how their, their wider team of teams can be more effective. It, it was awesome. Um, so, yeah, they they first of all used, like I said, they used OKRs, product goals. They used um, the empathy mapping from design thinking. 
They used their customer journeys. They overlaid customer journeys with service design. So obviously you've got your front end, your back end, how they think, how they feel, any, any third party um, uh, alignment that needs to be made too, um, all within one diagram uh, as an as is and then a 2B. The 2B was co-created from all of the skill sets required, but also the real customer um, understanding and test and learning. Uh, they had a method of change that they created, which was following the double diamond. Um, so it was very much based on rapid prototyping and testing with a small audience before it scaled. It was just awesome. It just made the job really easy. <laughs> it was great. And that's the key, right? Because when we work with POs or if they are already that good, when we work with POs and we help them be better, like our job becomes so much easier. We can actually, uh, get up into, well, let, let's call it like the Maslow pyramid of the agile coach, like the basic stuff, <laughs> right? The process yeah. is there, right? But we, when, when the product owner is able to perform, the team is able to perform and, and they have good communication skills and they're able to talk to the teams outside and the stakeholders outside, then we can go up in that pyramid. We can get to the point where we're not just trying to get the trains to run. We're actually trying to build a, 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 a beautiful spaceship with their help, right? Because they're putting some of the work that sometimes we need to do on a daily basis. They're putting that work forward and then we can go on and move to, to other topics and really help teams go to the next level. Exactly. So that was the, the blessing in that environment was I got to focus more on that sc the scaled problems that come with having, you know, I think this was 10 teams um, all looking at one big backlog and how do we, you know, how do we organize around it most effectively? How do we improve as a team? What's the measures? What's the leadership behaviors we need? Um, and how do we implement more of a sort of a team of team thinking um, and ability to um, adapt and inspect rapidly um, without interfering in our ability to, to deliver value? Um, it was really, yeah, really, really good experience of finding that balance and helping that, that program find their balance there. Absolutely. Ryan, uh, it's been a pleasure. I've learned so much this week. Uh, we've heard so many great stories this week, uh, but uh, all good things come to an end. Before we do, though, uh, do share with us, where can we find out more about you and the work that you're doing? You can find out more about me at www.rayankareem.com. So it's spelled a bit funky because I'm half Pakistani, half English. So it can be pronounced Ryan, but it's actually spelled R-A-Y-Y-A-N, double Y, right? So rayonkareem.com, you can find everything there. Um, Absolutely. We'll, we'll put the a, link we'll... on the show notes so that nobody has to spell that, right? So just yeah, go good. <laughs> open the show notes and click the link. It Useful. will be there. Very Ryan, good. it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for being on the show and being so generous with your time and your knowledge. Thank, thank you, Vasco. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, guys, for listening. One more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast is over, but there's a lot more we have to share. We have developed our own membership site where you find a community of active and engaged Scrum Masters. In this site, you get access to exclusive content and get to interact with us, your podcast hosts, as well as the best Scrum Masters in the world. So join us at scrummasterpodcast.com and keep this podcast free of advertising. See you next week for one more full week of Scrum Master tips and tricks. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.